Last time on Rotgut Blends. Usually I would give you the choice of what I had to fix next, but uh, I want to do George Dickel Tabasco. But I'm going to give you guys the choice of what the challenge is for me doing the blending, okay? And this week's challenge is... Well... All right, folks. So, today I have got to take a corn-based Tennessee whiskey, charcoal mellowed, that was blended with aged Tabasco pepper mash and the essence of Tabasco brand pepper sauce in a Tabasco barrel uh, and turn that into one of the most heavily sherried Scotch single malts on the planet. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is gonna happen either, but it's not gonna stop me from trying because that's what we do here on the Rot Gut Review. So, tell you what I'm gonna do. I usually I would have rules about this. Usually I would say I can't use anything more expensive than $40. Uh, I can't have, I, you know, I has gotta only one thing can cost more than $25. Those rules are going out the window because I don't I don't think I'm gonna come anywhere close to what I need to do under those rules. I have a lot of sherry things I've got a lot of malt. I don't have a lot of things that are sherried in malt that uh, fit into that. And I think I'm gonna have to use some of that to get what we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one blend that fits into the usual rules, all right? Nothing over 40, uh, only one thing over 25, okay? Or approximately, we're gonna do the best we can. We're gonna mix it up a little bit. We'll see what happens. And then I'm going to do one that's our expensive blend, where I'm just going to try to get it as close as possible. So we're going to use Macallan number five as our standard. This is number five, or number three, sorry. This is number three, not number five. This is number three. Um, this is the one that was all done with Roja Dove. It's a master perfumer, blah, blah, blah. Um, luckily, with this one, it's not quite as sherry forward as some of the other McCallans. I mean, it is pretty sherry forward, but it's a little bit spicier. So I'm kind of hoping we may be able to find something comparable because of that. Oh, it still is really, really sherry though. That is all just fruit and sulfur and nuttiness. I don't even know if there's any whiskey in there. But, okay, so let's let's start out with our poor man's blend. So both blends are still gonna be 50% uh, George Dickel. I did a little experimentation already. And you would think, right? You'd think the trick is just put as much sherry malt in there as you can, right? That's not the case. You have to be selective. You need to find something that not only gives it sherry flavor, but also takes away that really vegetal, spicy, Tabasco-y finish. Because this thing, this George Dickel tastes like, I mean, it tastes like hot peppers with just a little bit of whiskey. It's really, really heavy on that. It's easy to get some sherry flavor on the front. Not so easy to get them to match up so much on the finish, which is something I'm finding with a lot, a lot of these Rock gut blends. So I'm gonna get to work. I've, already, I've got a few ideas. I got a few ideas. I'm gonna play around with this some. We're not doing the, the multiple chances because at this point I'm just gonna do my best. Um, and once I come up with my two final blends, Erica is gonna come in here. She's gonna decide which is the closest to our McAllen standard. All right? All right, let's get to work. All right. So here we are. I've got my stuff that I can use to try and get this right. Now I've got, all of this is within the 25, well, 
either below 25 or 25 to 40 range. So this is our this is our more traditional blend for this show. I've got some monkey shoulder. We're going to see if we can't add some some of this blended malt to cut some of that uh, uh, weird Tabasquiness. Um, then for our sherry stuff, Grangestone sherry cask maturation. This is like second or third fill. I don't know how much sherry we're actually going to get from that. And then we've got Chivas Regal, the extra Oloroso sherry. So at least Oloroso is a sweeter one. Hopefully that should come through more. Then I was trying to figure out what else would I need. I was considering Ben Romick. Ben Romick has a, like a little sneaky peat in there though. We really don't need any peat, but maybe just a little bit of that will help cover up some of the tabasco -iness, and maybe together they'll come out as a more spicy kind of French oak thing. Maybe? Probably not, right? I'm kidding myself. It's okay. We'll try it anyway. Uh, and then we're going to try a little bit of the this Grinch Stone, the 12 year old. I don't know. We're going to play. I'm going to play around with different mixtures of this. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Okay guys, I am like halfway through blending this. Right now I've added some grain stone. We're already getting up pretty high in there. So like we had this much dickel, we've added that much. So we're not, we're not over the 50% mark yet, but we've added quite a bit. Um, I've got about half Chivas, half grain stone, and then a splash of this in there. Um, I think this is a fool's errand, you guys. I don't think any of these can stand up to this. The problem is, like, this is Shiva's right here. The problem is this has so little sherry on the nose, and it's kind of true of the grainstone, too. Maybe the grainstone has a little bit more. The problem is that these have so little sherry in the first place. They're cheap because they're not using first fill sherry, so there's a lot less sherry flavor there. And there's just nothing that can stand up to that big Tabasco punch. I think I'm going to have to rely on the Ben Romick to cut into that, hopefully. Because right now this is not coming off sherried at all. Like, there's a light fruitiness. The lightest fruitiness. The most light fruitiness. But it's not. It's not working. It's really not working. All right, I got my blend here. We're 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 at about as much as I can add in without going over fifty percent dickel. This isn't working, you guys. This smells like sherry. This smells like boiled fruit. This smells like dried fruit. This smells like a touch of sulfuriness. This is our standard, by the way. Actually, the taste is. Very sulfury, very dried fruit, very, very almondy, cashewy. So it's not as fruity, but we're nowhere near. We are nowhere near close. Yeah, this is just not happening. <laughs> All right, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add as much, we're going to add a little bit more dickel so we can add some more sherried stuff in. I mean, the Ben Romick is really the thing that's standing out the most right now. That Grangestone and the Chivas just got eaten alive in there. Just nom, 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 nom. There's nothing left of them. So let's just pour in all the Chivas and the Grangestone. Maybe, maybe that sherry will come out. I don't think it will. I don't think it will. I think it's going to stay buried in there. I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, for our final nasty blend that's just all the cheap stuff with a bunch of dickel, I think we are finally, maybe, maybe edging on getting just a little bit of sherry in there. Just a little bit. I mean, it took like a bunch of grainstone and shivas 
to get any kind of sherry. I don't know if I'm imagining it though. There may be just a touch in there. It still just smells like Dickel, Dickel Tabasco, I, guys. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Let's see about the taste. Okay, we've at least smoothed out that really spicy pepperiness. That's something, if nothing else. It's come slightly closer to maltiness rather than just a big blast of pepper. So that's a victory. Um, it's nowhere close to McAllen. So that's why we're breaking the rules. That's why we're going to break the rules. We are going to do a rich man's blend, which basically means we are going to we're gonna ruin some good whiskey, you guys. It's gonna be great. All right, so we got our dickle here, right? Is that our dickle? No, this is our dickle. Yep, that's our dickle. So that's our dickle. This is our standard McAllen. This is the control, as it were. Okay, so I'm gonna take some good whiskey. I'm gonna take some bad whiskey. I'm gonna take your mile to dinner. We're gonna form a fast friendship out of our combined mutual respect for you and everyone else in her life. It's going to be beautiful. But, all right. So, from my experimentation, I already know one thing that's going to help this dickle. Right here. This is Highland Park the Dark, 17-year-old. Obviously, this is extremely sherried. Yeah. Okay. That is dickle. It is sweet, though. There is some sweetness there, which is nice. I don't hate dickle Tabasco too much. Anyway, this is Highland Park of the Dark. Um, this is a very expensive bottle. Um, I got this on clearance at my work, so it was only like 150 but the first time I bought it, I paid 220 for it. But uh, from my experimentation, I know this. Well, it doesn't actually combine, give as much sherry, like that really boiled fruitiness or like that really raisininess or whatever it does take away a ton of that spicy, prickly vegetalness, especially on the finish. So that's why I want to use this. So uh, there we go. I'm putting, going to put it like, I don't know, 25, yeah, 25% of the blend might be that. Yeah, yeah. Now for the other parts, I've had a couple ideas. I had a couple ideas. Because I think the one that makes the most sense is some Mortlock. So this is Mortlock 19. I think I paid $60 for this. This was actually a great fucking deal. Fantastic fucking deal for that. And I wanna get, I really do need to get some fruitiness in there and some sulfuriness, right? I mean, McCallum's kind of famous for the sulfuriness. I'm thinking Stranahan's Sherry Cask. This is the uh, single malt whiskey out of Colorado. Um, and I'm debating now I'm debating a little bit. I was thinking Lark. Now Lark's a port finish. So it's not the same as Sherry, it does, it, but it does have some of those big fruits, but they're not exactly dried fruits. So I was thinking that might not work. Then I was thinking Glenmorangie La Santa. But the thing with La Santa is it does have that sulfury note, but it's not as big, punchy, strong as McAllen, and it might just get lost in the shuffle. But I might try a little bit of all three. I'm gonna pour a little bit of all three and then we're gonna mix and see if we can't get that fine mixture of fruitiness, that almondy cashewiness, and the raisininess that we need. Let's find out. So I'm discovering something with these three. The Mortlock actually has a touch. Yeah, it has some, it has some nice, like burned nutty notes. Like, uh, like if you, you know, cooked and caramelized nuts, but they, they just got a little bit burned and that's working pretty well. 
but it's not the same kind of nuttiness that you get in the McCallum. Right? So, but I do think we need some, some Mortlock in there. I did add a little bit more of the dark, because I think the dark is really going to give us that kind of, that deep sulfury, that sulfury sherry. I think that's our best bet to get that. Um... What I'm finding with the Stranahan's, I was got, I was thinking the Stranahan's might give me the, the amount of fruit I need. But the problem I'm running into there is it's it's too... It's like a very artificial, Laffy Taffy kind of fruit. But it does have the right amount of nuttiness. But the fruit's wrong. The fruit is not the same. See, the problem is I'm really having trouble, like, getting that, that fruity nose, that certain dried fruit and sulfur nose that McAllen is known for. Right now, we've got something that smells like, like, sherried barbecue. Like a really, a really darkly burned steak covered in Tabasco. But with, like... Like if you put a bunch of a put you like put a bunch of raisins on it too. I don't know, you cooked a steak in a bunch of raisins and then covered it in Tabasco. That's where we're at right now. Which I gotta say is is a far cry from where we were at with this motherfucker, the uh the poor man's blend. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. That finish is way too spicy. I don't think we're, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fix that, you guys. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix that super spicy finish. I just don't think it's gonna happen. The nice thing about the La Santa, I will say, the La Santa is a lighter, you know, it's finished in sherry, what, six months or something? I mean, it's aged 12 years in bourbon casks, yeah. So it's, doesn't have a lot of the sherryness. That maltiness is, bringing down the uh that really it's bringing out more sh uh, sugariness from the dickle so some of the, that dickle sweetness is shining through a little bit more uh when paired with the santa which is nice which is good that's what we're going for really the main thing we're trying to kill in the dickle is not that corn sweetness it's the obscene amount of tabasco i'm not getting enough sherry on the taste that's going to be the problem that's going to be the problem. I so when we bring Erica in here, I bet you anything she's going to be like, "I don't smell the sherry on this." Like I managed to kill the amount of pepper, but I can't get the sherry in it. Oh my God, whiskey, Jason, you're killing me. You're killing me. No, I'm having fun. This is actually a really good time. I mean, it's a bit of a fool's errand, but it's actually a really good time. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of more of the Mortlock. I'm thinking a little bit more Mortlock. Oh, this nose is not, it's not gonna get better. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, I'm gonna cap these. I'm gonna cap both of these. I'm gonna come back in like a little while, I don't know. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know. We're gonna give them a little bit of time. See what happens. If they haven't married nicely after that, if they haven't come to a place that's decent, I'll try to fix them one more time. But after that, we're going to the judging because I don't think I can make these any better, you guys. I'm doing my best, I'm doing my best, but goddamn. God damn, this is a, this is a challenge. It's Eddie, I'm back. It's been like some amount of time. Let's see if these have gotten married together a little bit. I'm thinking no matter how badly these come out and how awful they are, I think we need to put them in some sample size bottles and then leave them for at least a week. Just see what happens. See if they mesh any better and come any closer to McAllen. So that's something we can report back on in a future video. All right, but let's try the poor man's blend first. So Grainstone, Shivas, 
more brainstone and men romic. Yeah. Still smelling a lot, a lot, a lot of pepper. A lot of Tabasco. That's to be expected. If you really, really look for it, maybe there's a little sherry there. That just tastes... Oh, and I forgot there's some monkey shoulder in there, too. That just tastes like a very flat Highland malt with some Tabasco sauce in it. There's really no sherry there to speak of. Um, I guess I have some Chivas left. I guess we can see if that helps any. I mean, I can't add too much because then we'll go... It won't be mostly Dickel anymore. We'll see. We'll set that to the side for just a minute and we'll find out. All right, and then the expensive one, which I used a bunch of pretty nice to very nice bottles on. <laughs> um, using my little matching drum cap. Look at that, isn't that cute? Thank you, Jason. Um, Jason from Matching Drum, not Whiskey Jason. Whiskey Jason is the one who made me do this. He didn't actually make me do this. This is fun. I'm enjoying myself. Oh, oh, this one actually came together pretty well. It's definitely not as sulfury, oily, big nuttiness as as the Macallan, but it's it's in it's in the range. It's like within five miles, you know. It's like it's like a few dozen football fields away, which is way more than I can say for that first blend. Yeah. That finish though, that finish is actually worse than the set, than the first one. Yeah, unfortunately. I think if there's anything we can do to this one, I'm gonna have to add a little more dickle so we can maintain the ratio, but I think we top this off with some Mortlock and some Stranahan's. Then we let Erica take a crack at these. I think that's what we got to do. I think that's what it is. Um, I don't think I'm going to get these much closer than this. And this one's not bad. I might actually add a drop of the Highland Park uh, Dark in there too. I think that's what's going to put it over the edge. I think this Dark is the thing I, I need. The problem with the Dark, it does give a lot of the sherry flavor. It helps the finish. I don't know, it's it's not exactly the same sherry flavor as the Macallan, though. But it's not too... This isn't terribly far off. I'm not going to say it's close, because it's not. But it's not terribly far off. So, yeah. We'll see how I did. I didn't do well. Okay, so, sweetie. Yes. You are doing the judging of how I did with the blending. Yes. I'm warning you right now. May not be great. <laughs> okay. So on your uh, right hand side is your control. That's Macallan edition number three. Okay. So if you want to take a sniff and sip of that first, get an idea yes. of what you're looking for. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then my two blends are there. Now one was made with nothing over $40. Okay. And one was made with some of the most expensive stuff we have in the house. So these contain more than two. Okay. Yes. Like science so, blend. Yeah. These are multiple different bottles in each of them. All right. Yeah. So whichever whichever way you want to start first. I'll just start in the middle. Okay. All right. Want to start on the other side? <laughs> Go back to the <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, before I taste it, I will describe the smells I got. So, both gave me a pretty chemically smell, but it smells like there is something nice buried under this one. So, it's, I have more hope for the taste of that one, but this one was just. Like it somehow tastes, smells like you lit hot sauce on fire, but in a garbage yard. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. 
I'm sorry. No. No, don't be. Okay. I'm too. sorry that you have to do this. <laughs> me too. I see what you were trying to do here. There's like a brief moment where I'm like, oh, I get the sherry flip, but then right away the dickle snaps in. But then it's also chased by like that rubber yard flavor on fire. I'm sorry. That's fine. Okay. I this is I have no I have no personal <laughs> like ego in this. This one is better. But it's still that dickle. It really the thing is, like you will get like a front end, you're like, oh, that's pleasant, and then right away the dickle's like Rah! <laughs> hot sauce. <laughs> so But which one's closest to Macau? This one. Okay. Because that, that brief front end note is sherried before the dickle snaps in. Yeah. So. Yeah. Which one is which one is the more one made with the expensive stuff? Can I know what expensive stuff it is, or you just have to guess? Uh, I can tell. You. Yeah, sure, I'll tell you. So the expensive stuff was Highland Park, okay. Mortlock, nineteen year old, um, a little La Santa from Glenmore and G, and Stranahan's. So Stranahan's and Glenmore and G aren't that expensive, but okay. yeah. Is it this one? It is that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So for then sure. what's in this one? That one was Chivas Regal, two Grangestones, a little Ben Romick 10, uh, and then some Monkey Shoulder. So I'm going to die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I've dressed for a funeral. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You tried. Yeah. And I, this is a hard one, though. This is a really hard one. Whiskey Jason challenged me to this. Yeah. And I, I think he might have been joking, but... Uh, Did you want to get in here? You're, like, <laughs> you're probably just on the periphery. Uh, I think he I think he might have been joking, but uh, we did it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Not great. No, that dickle just does not want to seem to mix with things. I know. That dickle just... It, you just you just gotta grab that dickle and put it in your mouth. Right, well, that dickle will not let go. That dickle will just put itself all over your mouth. I'm going to go <laughs> drink some cheap wine now. <laughs> and until next time, everyone, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. subscribe. I don't actually know if I'm in the field of you. Maybe. And until next time, stay, stay rotten. rotten.